Okay, so I was covering notes about the uh, lowering of the engine. So um, basically, what I've done is I've removed these two these two bolts uh, at this point from the engine mount on the right hand side at the back, and you can see the engine mount is now uh, lowered, whereas the other engine mount is still connected to the chassis, and there's also an engine mount at the front. Um, so basically by removing just the engine mount on one side and also all the previous steps that I've followed uh, that I've already recorded you you get enough space to work uh, on uh, on the engine as you can see the engine is quite lowered and I've got all this gap and I would say it's about close to seven seven to about seven seven inches or eight inches maybe a decent amount of space to work on the starter motor and um, so lowering just one side is sufficient um, in terms of really getting access to a lot of the components um, so the, the the point I want to cover here now also is uh, how I've actually jacked the car so I have uh, two axle stands for the vehicle and uh, that blue one at the back that's on the left hand side and there's another one on the right hand side and I've also put a bunch of um, you know rags on top of the uh, axle stand just to make sure it doesn't scratch any of the plastic parts and uh, um, keeps all the uh, uh, all the vehicle um, components safe. Um, and I've done the same on the other side as well. And that's just for to so it it doesn't scratch anything. So I've got these two axle stands securing the vehicle from the sides, and uh, then I have this. Uh, trolley um, jack which is holding the uh, uh, the gearbox now I have read that you can't you don't need to actually put the trolley jack there um, to support the engine because even the two engine mounts are good but because it's given me sufficient uh, room to work on um, I'm okay to, um, to to leave the jack in place and I'm, I'm quite comfortable with that the other thing I'm doing is I'm using a stool uh, just to stand on so that I, when I'm actually working on the engine uh, I have very good access to now working uh, on the engine while I've got the tailgate lowered. So that's basically all the notes on uh, now that I've got access to the to the engine and to the area for the starter motor. Uh, the bit I want to cover now is that you see the whole point of removing all these components was literally to access these two bolts and these two bolts here is basically what holds the start motor together and uh, and they basically go in here there and the second one goes uh, at the back now the the one that you see in the middle I'm just gonna put some more light there the one that you see in the middle here was holding the plastic housing so you can see that this one was covered by the um, plastic housing which is um, this one here for the intercooler so for that reason you couldn't get to this bolt without removing the plastic housing so you have to remove all these components just to get to this bolt so I removed that bolt and the other one uh, I would I would advise that you you take your time and don't rush because uh, it's very easy and I've seen people actually ruining these uh, bolts um, by just hurrying up the so speeding up the process to um, to you know just just apply a lot of force and just slow it down slow down and just take your time because you don't want to ruin these bolts it's, it must be very very difficult to you know take these out if they're spoiled um, I have to say I mean even the side small uh, bolts that were holding the uh, Plastic housing together. Um, they look they look very um, small and they were very tight. So um, I would advise taking a lot of care in that. But anyway, I've removed the starter motor bolts. Once I've done that, I'm now in a position to uh, get to the starter motor. And the next step that I'm going to be following, which I will record in the next video, is that the starter motor now is. Uh, is viewable which is down here um, let me just see if I can cover that um, there yes it's there that's the starter motor and the bit that I need to do is I need to remove 
uh, these two pipes, which are for, I believe, for the coolant. I'm going to just look that up and make sure that I've got that right. So once I remove that, remove the two um, pipes, I should then be able to uh, pull the uh, the starter motor out from this gap between this gap. And once I've done that, I can just put the new starter motor in. And I will be recording that um, in the next video. I'm just going to pause the video just in case there's something else that I can record at this point to make sure um, I've got everything covered. So just bear with me. Okay, so I think that's uh, that's everything. I don't think I've, uh, I can include any further notes on that. Um, other than basically this is uh, the total... Uh, number of components and different things that I've, I've taken out uh, from the vehicle so that I can get to the starter motor and uh, I will now take out the starter motor and uh, record further notes on anything that I learned so thank you very much for uh, watching this video and I hope it's uh, useful to you thank you